And so I think uh, that's the, one of the requirements, that it be strategically located. And here in this picture, we're looking south, and we can see Jerusalem there in the distance, some of the hotels and churches and so on. Clear line of sight uh, vision. One of the other things that we read about in the account in chapter 7, when that first group uh, went up, uh, we're told that they were struck down as they attacked the gate, and uh, the men of Ai pursued them from the gate as far as the Shevarim. This is the Hebrew word. It's simply transliterated here. Some translations will say the quarries, uh, something like that. Uh, we really don't know what the word means. So they were uh, pursued from the gate as far as the Shevarim, and they struck them down on the descent. Now, I is up in the hills. Obviously, the first Israelite group that went up there, uh, as they were driven back, they are retreating back down to Gilgal, back down in the Jordan Valley. So they're going down a descent. And as they uh, were retreating and heading back to Gilgal, the men of Ai chased them as far as this Shevarim, some kind of a landmark. And as I say, we don't know exactly what it means, but the root of the Hebrew word means to split or break. And that's why it's been thought perhaps it's a quarry of some sort. Well, uh, here in this uh, valley, the uh, Wadi Gaya, and we'll see this in a, uh, on a map in a moment, uh, we see a natural cliff formation where the rocks are breaking away. Uh, in our reconstruction, uh, we believe that the Israelites came up this Wadi Gaya to get up to Ai, and we believe the retreating force would have gone back down this Wadi, and perhaps this is that Shevarim that's mentioned there. Uh, again, we can't be 100% sure, but it's our candidate, our possible uh, Shevarim location. Now here's another view, aerial view of our site, as you see there on the left, and uh, on the right, we have the Wadi Shaban, and this is between the site of Kerbet el Makader and El Bira, which is off to the right here. <coughs> Joshua, when he brought the entire army up to attack the city of Ai, he placed an ambush force, and we're told exactly where that ambush force was placed. It was gonna be between Ai and Bethel. So uh, we can uh, look for an ambush site then between the two places. And it has to be a place that cannot be seen from either Ai or Bethel because Bethel gets involved in the battle. We're told that when the Israelites uh, went up there to attack Ai, the men of Bethel came out to help the men of Ai. And so you would have to be hidden from both uh, places. So this is a very deep valley. You can't see into it from our site of Kerbet el Makader, which we believe is I, uh, or from Beitin, uh, or excuse me, from Elbira over here, which we believe to be Bethel. So here's our scripture verse, Joshua 8, 9. Uh, Joshua sent this uh, ambush force off. They went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and I to the west of I. So here's one of our geographical requirements. Uh, you have to have a, uh, an ambush site between Bethel and I. And we're told that when uh, Joshua bought, brought the entire army up to I, that uh, they arrived in front of it and they set up camp north of I. Now here's a very important statement, and I'm sure uh, as you have read this account in the past, you've really probably not thought too much about it. But archeologists, you know, they see something like this. Wow, this is loaded with information. First of all, uh, they set up camp north of Ai. Well, now Joshua was coming up with this huge army, thousands of men, and where would he set up his camp? Well, I would, uh, if I was uh, Joshua or one of his generals, I would want to set my camp up on the highest hill in the area so we could defend our position, so we could see the whole area of the battlefield. And here we have, just north of our site, 
this very uh, high hill, high ridge actually, not a prominent hill, but a ridge and uh, called the Wadi or the Jebel Amar. And this is the highest point in the whole area. And so uh, north of uh, the site of Kerbet al Makadar, we have this uh, excellent uh, area, which would be, I believe, the command post that Joshua set up where the majority of the army uh, went. And we're told here that uh, Joshua arrived in front of Ai, and he's on the north side of Ai because he set up his camp on the north of Ai. Well, what is the front of a city? Well, it's the same as the front of your house. It's where the entrance is. The front of your house is where your front door is. Well, the front of a city is where the city gate is. And so this tells the archaeologist that the gate of Ai should be located on the north side of the fortress. Now we've learned already from chapter 7 that I had a gate. That means the city was fortified. So this is something else that's required of the site of I. You must have a fortified site with a, with a gate. Okay, so that's an archaeological requirement. And uh, so here we have the location of that gate on the north side. So that's what we need to find if we're going to identify uh, the location of I. And then this verse goes on to tell us, or the, actually this is uh, uh, a little further along in chapter 8, that there was a valley between them and the city. And here we see a shallow valley between that uh, ridge where I believe the army set up their camp uh, and the site of I. And then it tells us that night Joshua, Joshua went into the valley and uh, Joshua is setting up a ruse here. He's setting up uh, a trap for the men of Ai. Uh, 